Hello everybody and welcome back to For Real. This is the first in a series of videos about KEP. So Jeremy and I have moved from Campot and we're spending a bit of time in KEP. We'll put out a video um, explaining why we moved and where we are and what we're doing a bit later on. But until then, this will be the first in that series. So on the map, you'll see um, Campot and its relationship to KEP. It's about 21 kilometers away from Kempot. And on the other side, if you go to the east, Vietnam is about 39 kilometers from Kep. So that's a bit of geography um, of the province. The province itself is really, really small. It's only really got a couple of towns in it. And it's bordered on all sides by Kempot province. All of the places that I'm going to visit in today's video are within the Kep town area that's circled there. I went to so many different places that it's really impossible to pinpoint them all on a map. But as I say in the video, it really is just about wandering around and finding things that um, pique your interest. That's what Kep is all about to me. So let's get started. Well, I'm here at a pagoda in Kep, one that I haven't been to before. Been a bit of a break in the rain, so I thought I'd get out for a ride and see what's happening here. Have a quick look. There's a line of statues here. Guys riding different animals. Hello. Snake charmer. This one's riding a snake. This one's riding a rabbit. It's like they're gonna have some kind of weird race. <laughs> See who's got the fastest animal. I reckon this tiger looking thing would win for sure. Especially if he's beaten it with that stick to keep it going. And last guy's got a cow. I oh, know. Oh. Oh. Is that a rat? Or a capybara? <laughs> Something like that. He's got a very surprised expression on his face. All of these guys along here, they've all got slightly different faces. Very cool. I think that's where the monkey business goes on over there. Oh, here's a pond. There we go. Slightly creepy. Weird swimming pool kind of pond. <laughs> it's got reed bars. Sticking up around the side. Just on the Kep main road, I came across another one of those um, old French villas. So let's have a look what it says. Oh, it says it's the Queen's Villa. The now dilapidated villa is locates on the beachfront and was built in the 1930s and saved as a residence for Queen Sisowith Cossimac, mother of Prince Sihanouk. It is something scratched out, not open to the public. But you'll see that um, the building itself might be run down, but the gardens have been very, very nicely maintained. How beautiful is that? What a gorgeous building. Beautiful symmetrical garden at the front. Those hedges have been maintained very recently. It's beautiful. Not open to the public, but wow. How lovely. Kep has certainly got some amazing roads. Look at this. It's a four lane highway, I guess, with a island in the middle. But just over here, in all of this lush greenery, can you see that fence in there? That's kind of what Kep is like. There's just remnants of old buildings and structures kind of being taken back by this greenery. Kep's also full of really interesting places like this. Come across these little driveways and you think, what's going on in there? It certainly brings out the explorer in you, this place. They have guard mosquitoes here, so best not dilly-dally. Here's another one. It's just so inviting. Look at those lovely gates. 
Doesn't look like anyone's been through there in a long time. Makes you want to go in though, doesn't it? This is kept for you. Highway. Deep jungle. Sign is for the Casa Cap bed and breakfast, cafe and bread. Oh, backyard cafe and bread. Actually, I saw that for sale down at the shop, so they're still operational. But that's the road you have to traverse if you want to go there. Pretty challenging, I think. So I'm going to go for a walk up there and see if there's anything up there in the next, I don't know, half a kilometre or so. We'll see. This place with a fairly imposing entry is called Monica Village. Just see if I can poke my head in there. Doesn't look like it's up to much. Nobody around, but it's definitely been maintained. Another gate. This time it's slightly ajar. Let's just go towards the gate. See if there's anything of interest to be seen. This looks like vacant land to me. If there was something here, it's gone. This is a good example of an abandoned kept villa. This is kind of how most of them are. Sort of overgrown, not much left. Lots of graffiti. They're good to explore, but since I'm here by myself, I'll probably give that a miss today. There's a road right there, so it's certainly not something that you have to um, go off the beaten path to find. It must be nearly time for monkey activity, so we'll head back that way and see if there's anything to be seen. I thought the gate here was worth special note too. It's just a collection of tree branches strung together. Isn't this just the loveliest piece of road? Look at it! So much beautiful greenery on each side. Nice treed hill in front. I just found another overgrown kind of fence here. I'm trying to show you this massive tree that's fallen down over here. Have a look at this. It's huge. Anyway, I just realized that as I stopped to get the camera out, we have our first monkey. Okay, let me just get into a position where I can show you. Here he is, up in the tree. Can you see him? His tail's going nuts. It's a little baby one. It's tiny. He's giving himself a scratch. There's our lovely road. And over here, a set of stairs have been overgrown. There's something beyond that gate there. I think I'm still a little bit early because when I came past this place yesterday it was crawling with them. There would have been probably 30 just playing on this building alone running up and down the fences and you know jumping from the trees to the fence. It was great but none to be seen so far. Hmm. Maybe I'll just linger for a little while and see if any appear. Now I understand why there were so many monkeys here yesterday, and probably all the time, because this house has got a for rent sign on it, so it's probably not inhabited right now. It's a pretty place on the hillside, it's called Italian Corner. Restaurant and bar. Looks very pleasant indeed. We'll have to do a cost of living video about Kep. It's a strange place and um. If you wanted to live here, there'd be some things you'd have to consider. So, that might be something that we do in a video coming up soon. I think I failed a bit in the monkey, monkey seeking attempt of this evening. Maybe they only come out every second day. It's a very big building. There's someone standing up on top there too, I think. Huge. Another inviting looking driveway. It's quite flat and then it turns to dirt and gets quite steep further down there. 
Another really good thing about Kep is that it's nicely signposted. So wherever you are around the place, you're not far from a sign that's going to show you the direction that you need to go for the various attractions around the area, which is pretty much the beach, the national park or the crab market. <laughs> but sometimes it's just good to have that reassurance that you're going in the right direction. I do also intend to go up into the Kep National Park in the next couple of days, so have a look at that. Just show you the sign here. Kep National Park, 600 metres up this road. Squirrels Association, 900 metres. Kep Running Club, 900 metres. And the Led Zepp Cafe, which is, um, has a really good rating for an excellent view back down over to the coast. So, definitely worth a look. I think Led Zepp Cafe is actually inside the boundary of the National Park and you have to pay a princely sum of one dollar to enter. So, be doing that and having a bit of a look around up there. Kep's got a lot to offer and it certainly rewards the aimless wanderer. I hope you've enjoyed this little look around and don't forget to have a look in the description of this video. Check out all the links that we have and we'll see you in our next video.